Today we're going to talk about why this trade setup is in my playbook. Stay tuned traders, you don't want to miss this, we'll be right back. G'day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Tuesday, big day yesterday. Today we're going to be going over why you need to build your playbook. Yesterday was a textbook perfect setup on more than three or four of the pairs, if not all the pairs, in both sessions. And it's critical because it reinforces the basics of the same things happening over and over again almost every single day, especially on the British pound crosses. We talk about our simple approach to the market and today we're going to review that and we're going to hammer home some of the key reasons that I go through each day in terms of my process because it's all about how you're going to respond in live time. So it's one thing having some uh, playbook trade setups and then when we get into live time we don't see them until after the trades have played out and, and that's the, the, the challenge is being able to identify potential your potential trade setups, my potential trade setups, as they are setting up we don't know what they're going to do and in a lot of cases that hindsight they make sense and that's why it's important to deconstruct your process and I look back at each one of my steps and it's always about being able to focus right away on a couple of pairs that are starting to fall into my criteria that I can identify with and just walk through in my head are we in a trend are we in a rectangle are we up high are we down low are we potentially in a measured move or for a retest of a previous day's high or low? Little things that we can walk through that I use that help me, number one, identify the setup, but then number two, have a trade thesis for 50 pips or a measured move, whatever that may be, but then the criteria as well. Where am I going to get in? What time? Is it at the end of the hour? Am I in the middle of the hour? Is it the first candle of the hour? Am I at round numbers? We talked about this on the weekend. 50 pip boxes, double zeros and fifties. If it's at a quarter level, that can be an extended stop hunt or for a continuation for a breakout pullback in a trend trade. Very important. Engulfments and pin hammers. Today we're going to walk through this process again and I'm going to explain why in my head how I walk through that process as we get into the timings, as we head into the 12 candle window, as we are at numbers, and then what we're looking for as evidence to support our thesis in order for me to have the confidence and the discipline to not only get into the trade but to place my stop loss to manage my risk and then have an understanding about what we're looking for in terms of a profit target for 50 pips or for a measured move, maybe 75 pips, maybe 67 pips, maybe something better than 50 so I can get my positive R expectancy better than 3 to 1 or 2 and a half to 1 or 5 to 1, whatever that is for you. But <clears throat> it's important to know what you are looking for. It's one thing having a playbook trading setup. But it's, for me, it's about deconstructing, walking backwards through that process, especially if you're not seeing the trades. I need to know what do I need to do in live time so that no matter what happens, I can see the setup. And that's where a lot of people, you know, they want back testing results. They want to uh, walk, you know, they want some kind of confirmation through all these different different indicators, all those things, and, and, and as, as I've explained before, for me, that's great, but I still would have analysis paralysis all the time. So you keep peeling back the onion until you can walk through a step-by-step -step process every single day and duplicate it. And then you narrow that down to the three or four best trade setups for shorting, for going long, and for trend trading. And then in my head, I want to start, start using the clock because I know that 90% of the time, these trades are going to come either at the beginning of the hour or at the end of the hour. And as I've talked about before, if you think about all these rotations, 
one minute, 15 minute, one hour, four hour, all that rolling over together at certain timings, beginning and end of the hour. It makes sense. If we're at round numbers, if there's a pin hammer and an engulfment, well, there's a high probability that I might be in the right setup. So these are all the reasons why I keep breaking that down further so that I can walk through that process every day. And I want to know that when they give me a, a sell high setup, at the end of the first hour after an extended stop hunt at double zeros that I'm going to hit that if it's a pin hammer and it's a three bar engulfment for at least 50 pips and if it's a measured move through the previous day's low now we're looking at 100 pips. That's the sort of trades that I'm trying to target and that's why they're in my playbook and that's why I walk through this process every single day as we head into the end of Asia, I'm starting to sniff and I'm looking for the blood because I know they're setting the market up. And if it's an ideal setup, I'm ready to pounce. And I know why, I know where my stop is going to be placed, and I know the minimum profit target that I'm going to be shooting for. So again, we've had some traders nail these trades. And yesterday there was trades in London and the US session that were textbook perfect trade setups for a minimum of 50 pips. Some traders took 40 on a couple of the pairs that they, just on different pairs. It went to numbers, they got filled with the spread, they took their profit, it wasn't 50, but it was a 50 pip box. And again, the same things are gonna happen probably today. Is it gonna be perfect? I don't know. But I know as we get towards the end of Asia, I'm gonna start looking again for the same setups. And if they give me something after a stop on a one, two, three, maybe it's gonna be seven, one, seven. Maybe it'll be at the end of the third hour for 50 pips, but it's going to be at numbers. It's going to be with an engulfment and a pin hammer. It may be off a quarter level if they've done an extended stop hunt or if they've already had a move in Asia and we're looking at a breakout pullback continuation. They might pull it back to 25 and move it up to 75 and break into that upper 50 pip box. So let's review structure, pattern. Are we in a, a big rectangle? Is there any evidence of three pushes or a triple bottom, a triple top? Have we got a big do double top or double bottom? <clears throat> I, I always talk about horizontals. I look at everything as a horizontal box. And whether that's a head and shoulders, whether it's a double top, a descending triangle, it doesn't matter to me. I look at the high and the low for my geometrical shape. And I measure the distance. Typically that will be a double zero or a 50 pip box and then I'm looking for my high and low of the day to confirm that. So if they, they may have taken out a previous session high or low, we could be in a 75 pip move off of the low or the high. So three levels of rise. We might be in a reversal setup where they dropped it down 50 pips and pulled it back inside. Little things that start to tune me in right away but the most important thing I'm always looking at is where is my 50 pip box? Because then I can start to form a thesis based on the price action as we head into the end of the Asian session. So we talk about 717, 7 p.m., 1 a.m., 7 a.m., New York Eastern Standard Time. That's the hour before the 12 candle window. If I get a stop hunt or a third level of rise or fall, so it's a 75 pip box, Again, we might see an engulfment or a low of the week, high of the week setup. It's Tuesday. We could be at the low of the week on some of these pairs if, unless they've pulled back inside. But it's, it's about what are you looking for and working backwards in terms of how you process that information when you go to the screen. For me, I, I always talk about the clock is, is probably the most important thing. Am I at the high or the low? at certain times. In that last hour, am I at the high or the low, or have they pulled it back inside? If we have a high and a low and they drop it back inside, I'm expecting a stop hunt. So I'm thinking, okay, first hour. If I don't get in the first hour, I'm thinking second hour. They'll trap traders inside of the high and low, and eventually bang, 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 hit the high or hit the low. And that's assuming we don't already, already have a peak formation in place, meaning a double top, double bottom, a sell high, descending triangle, buy low, ascending triangle, that sort of situation. So high and low of the day, have we already had an engulfment or a pin hammer put a peak formation in place? 
and then the timings. Remember, there's going to be a stop hunt and a trap. So the stop hunt and the trap can be the same thing. That one, two, three entices traders to chase that momentum. They're afraid of missing the move. It's running away without me. They jump in only to find out that it's the trap taking them into the high or the low. We get an engulfment. Often a pin hammer will follow that because the pin hammer is the stop hunt on the guy that gets the trade right. That's one more little attempt to shake you out of the position or to stop you out of break even if you've taken on too much size and you get in and after one bar you go to break even because you can't handle the stress. They pop it up one more time, stop you out and then you watch the market move away without you. And usually once they shift this market it's because they've got trap volume and they're going to shift it away. Some people will hold on for a 25 pip stop loss, but 50 pips is normally enough to bend the arm of most traders. So hopefully that makes sense. The most important thing, and I always talk about this, is managing your risk. So I use a one bar stop, and if it's an engulfment, the extreme of that engulfment will be the stop loss, the pin hammer. Once the pin hammer's in place, you should pretty much be locked in for the move. One bar stop, one ATR, basically the same thing. And as I explained to somebody today in a question, if you understand those numbers move in quarterly levels, okay, so let's call this 25, double zeros, 75, and 50. Say I'm going to short the market at double zeros. Uh, actually, let's say 75. I short the market on an engulfment. Da, 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 da. If I'm on my game, I'll fight for a, a better fill instead of the numbers. I'll get in at, sorry, instead of the closing price, I'll get in hopefully at 75 or 75 plus the spread for 77. If my stop is, say, 20 pips, that puts me out about here, minus 20. If my stop is bigger than that and it goes through zeros, guess where they're going to next? They're going to 25. So if you, if you don't have a stop in place and it goes through zero, now you're looking at a possible 50 pip move because if it doesn't stop at the major round numbers, they're going a minimum to 25. That's the extended stop hunt on the 50 pip box. And if they're breaking into the upper box, they're going, that's right, all the way to 50. So you know now why if a trader holds on to a losing position, they're doing measured moves, you're looking at maybe a 75 pip loss. So, or sorry, a 50, well 50, if you get in down at 75, you're looking at a 75 pip loss. And if you have too much leverage on, this is why people blow up their trading accounts. So it's critical to have a one, why I use a one bar stop, because if I'm right, this market is all done doing business above 75. They are going down, first place they're going to go to is 50, but if I'm right, it's going to go a minimum of down to 25 for the 50 pip move, and they'll break into the lower 50 pip box for an extended move, maybe to double zeros. So I use a one bar stop, one ATR. Again, if you're filled at or near the numbers, you're looking at to the extreme, but typically on average, most of those stops will be 20 to 25 pips, depending on the pair and the spread and depending on where you get filled. But it's important to know that you do not want to be holding on to that. If it goes through those levels, it will continue to go to the next set of numbers. We're going to look at yesterday's trade setups. That trade yesterday on the Pound Canadian is a textbook, perfect playbook trade setup out of my playbook. Pin hammer, last candle of the first hour, engulfing the previous two candles and the highest bull candle, closing at double zeros, high of the day, 50 pips from the previous day's low. It did a measured move for 100 pips. I was out at the double zeros, uh, or sorry, at 50. The US session offered another 50 pips, stop hunt back up, and a 50 pip move down on the pound. There was some great setups, again, Stick to the simple process, and it's about how 
I'm going to see things unfold and what I can use in terms of steps to walk myself through and use self-talk to know exactly what I'm looking for. Have a great trading session. Keep it going traders. Some great results. Thank you for all the questions and hitting the like button. I know some traders are starting to really knock some trades out of the park and I'm excited. It's awesome. Have a great day and may the markets go with you. Good day traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading continuing our discussion on why this trade setup is in my playbook. We talk about structure and we're just going to go straight away and mark off the previous day's low and the previous day session, most previous recent session high. So we had the US high from Friday. We have the low of the day from Friday. We have our 50 pip box between 50 and double zeros as we head into the end of the Asian session. We go above the double zero box in that last hour of Asia as we head into our 12 candle window and we'll blow this up so people can see a little clearer. We have a stop hunt, stop hunting traders who were short at the end of the 12 candle window on Friday. The market has moved off the low of Friday above the quarter level and gone sideways pushing down into it with pins on the bottom, pushing down into it, pushing down into it a third time before three bar engulfment sideways and then shifting the market and we get a breakout above the Asian session high. A little hammer that takes us up to the double zeros, pulls back, hits it again and then in the last hour goes one, two sideways into the 12 candle window, three, high bull candle. First candle, second candle, third candle is an inside bar. We've done a stop hunt, and then we get the pin hammer for an engulfment of the high bull candle, which we talk about, at round numbers, at the end of the first hour in our 12 candle window. Our first Two targets are the swing low heading into the second last hour of Asia. And then our next target is the low of the day. Our thesis is that this market will retest the low. If we go and look at our daily chart real quick, we can see this market is had a one, two, three, then a engulfment for a short trade on the inside bar. And the move down on Friday, or sorry, on um, Friday was the breakout of the inside bar. And then the thesis is that this market will continue down to retest the, the low after the swing high. But coming back to our original premise, we have three levels of rise from the low, 25, 25. And we're into the third level of 25 when our stop hunt is complete. We have a one third last push after a one two third push high bull inside bar engulfment last candle of the first hour double zeros our thesis is measured move through the low of Friday for the continuation as I mentioned I, w I exited at the low of the day but pin hammer engulfment double zeros 50 pips textbook perfect trade setup right out of my playbook. This is exactly what I look for. And that's the process that I deconstruct in my head. 25, 25, end of the session for Asia, three pushes up, round numbers, stop hunt, engulfment, pin hammer, double zeros, break even. Once it clears the level and consolidates, you definitely would be at break even once it broke the quarter level. So traders are inside of this quarter at double zeros. They may have gone to break even at the, the consolidation underneath the swing low. But definitely once this market closes down underneath of the 75 quarter level, you would be at break even. And watching the behavior 
when it hits the low of the day. This market continues to break through. That is not a reversal. The market breaks through the double zero, or sorry, the 50. Consolidation and falling wedge for the measured move down. Just looking at the other pairs, same process. Round numbers. We said, where's our 50 pip box? Asia stayed in between the quarter and the double zeros. 8,000 major round numbers. The move down on Friday was down, went into consolidation, worked back up into the double zeros. One push, two push, three pushes down before engulfing at the quarter level and retesting the shorts, dropping down, staying inside of the double zeros. Consolidation into the Europe London Open after the tweezers hitting the double zeros. Pin hammer at the quarter level. Last candle of the first hour. Again, thesis is the previous day's low. Last high before the move down for our measured move. One full expansion would take traders at least to 79.25. 50 pips from our pin hammer is 79.25. This market obviously did an extended stop hunt down to the round numbers before pulling back in the U.S. Session 12 candle window. One push, two push, three pushes. Pin to the high, high bull engulfment. As I mentioned, some traders didn't get their 50 pips, but the market moved down 50 pips to the low of the day before consolidating at double zeros. And this is a great example of where I would be looking at time decay and looking at exiting the trade when the market goes sideways for more than two candles without taking out my profit target. Looking to squeeze as much out of a winning trade setup without it coming back and eating in or stopping me out with nothing. Pound New Zealand, 50 pip box, 92.50, double zeros. Previous day's low, three pushes to the high, one push, two pushes, three pushes heading into the session end of Asia with a one, two, three, tweezers, second candle of the first hour in the 12 candle window, dropping down and consolidating sideways at the quarter level with a pin hammer at the end of the first hour, pin hammer at the quarter level, market drops down to double zeros before pulling back and stop hunting traders who have gone to break even, going sideways and another bear hammer for the measured move down. So this market actually moved 100 pips from zeros to zeros, sorry, from 50 to 50 before going into consolidation in the U.S. session, dropping down doing an extended stop hunt to the quarter level before pulling back inside, engulfing the lowest bear candle, stop hunting up 50 pips, hitting the numbers, dropping back down, pinning into the quarter level again, and retesting the low. But again, first hour, three pushes, 50 pips from the low of Friday, Three pushes on that third push for the 33 tweezers. Okay. Dropping down pin hammer at the quarter level for the measured move. British pound. Similar. Again, we talk about three levels of rise. Not quite 75 pips. Pretty close. Actually, 75 pips from high to low to the number. So the Asian range was extended out on the third level of rise. And we get our one, two, three engulfment. And then they hit it one more time in that first hour of the Europe London 12 candle window before consolidating sideways, giving a bullpen hammer at the quarter level and breaking out for the 50 pip move down to the low of Friday. Consolidating. One, two, three down, one, two, three up, engulfment at the previous day's low. The blue line is the previous day's low in our 12 candle window for an engulfment. 
pulling back, hitting it one more time before dropping down and moving 50 pips. One push, two pushes, and a one, two, three engulfment. Or one push, two push, three pushes in our 12 candle window, however you want to see that. But we have our 50 pip box, an example of where traders might have been waiting for this to fall right through the numbers. If they were filled earlier than that, they got their 50. These traders hopefully followed this down, tightening up as an example of where they've pinned the numbers, but not gone through it. But first hour, three levels of rise, pin hammer at the numbers. Again, numbers, 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 timings. Pound yen, double top. As soon as we see a middle structure present like this, we need to be thinking possible double top sit, set up. Market goes one, two, three back up before dropping down, hitting it one more time. Not quite a full engulfment when we get the bullpen hammer. That's a three bar setup at the numbers for our double top structure. Hitting the measured move, which took us to Friday's low. Traders who shorted it up top definitely got their 50 pips. In the U.S. session, we had a 1, 2, 3 pullback. So we're working it into the previous day's low. One push, two pushes, three pushes for a 50 pip move back up. And then they came back down and stopped onto the low again for three bigger pushes. One push, two pushes, three pushes. And then we get an engulfment at the end of the 12 candle window with a bullpen hammer beside it. And we've come out of the low of the day into the next day's session, stop hunting towards the high of yesterday. Lastly, the British Pound Chief. Again, we move outside of our double zero box. The market one, two, three to the upper quarter level. We talked about quarters being an extended stop hunt. So they've moved 25 pips below the, uh, sorry, above the double zero box before engulfing the high bull. Okay, we got our high bull candle. And then we get our pin hammer. One last hit to the traders who have shorted this market and are in the right trade before consolidating and pulling away for a 75 pip move down. But again, double zeros. Previous day's low. So some traders have asked about their candles being different. My platforms, I have two different MT4 platforms. They don't look like this. One's different. But an example still where the market is inside of a 25 pip box. I just ignore this candle when it's like this. Shifting up. One push, two pushes, one, two, three. Engulfing the high bull. Hitting it a second time and engulfing it again. Making traders get filled in the middle. But a third time with a pin, there's our one last hit, consolidation, and then shifting away. So again, focusing on, uh, I deconstruct this in my head. Am I up high? Am I down low? Am I at numbers? Do I have a geometrical structure? Well, we're looking at a rectangle here. I talk about horizontals all the time. That's just a 50 pip box. There's the measured move for 50 down. That's 75 pips, depending on where you're filled. Timings, 12 candle window. Round numbers, engulfments, pin hammers. We're going to see this again and again and again, traders. Keep it simple. Hopefully you got value out of today's video. Stay disciplined, stay focused. Have a great trading session and may the market. Hi, traders. Go with you. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburketrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.